Hello my friends, hello Antalya, hello Antailanders, I'm Vas, welcome to my channel. You can subscribe, leave comments, leave likes, and you can subscribe to the Telegram group, which is in the description section. If you are new to this, welcome. And if you have any particular questions, Telegram group is probably the best place to go, place go and ask. It doesn't mean that people will have all the answers, but there is a good chance that they may have some answer for you. There are some really active people there, and I watch this conversation quite often. Sometimes I contribute to it. My time is limited, but I try to stay involved with that also. Many people ask if I can make a video about schools in Turkey. And I would like to do this, but honestly, it probably will take a lot more time. So I'm going to give you a general idea. If you are a foreigner, if you're looking to move to Turkey with your children, the best places to be is Lara and Koni Alti. That is where mostly you will find some foreign schools. Otherwise, you will have to use municipal schools, and they are fine schools. There is really no problem with that. Private schools in Turkey are pretty expensive. You are looking at about five to six hundred dollars a month, uh, which you will pay. And there are some of them Russian schools. There are some of them Canadian. I think there are some of them also going by British program. You will find them if you start looking, talking to other foreigners. It's not really a concern for me right now as far as the schools. But I know quite a few people who live in Liman, Hurma area, and they take their children to the Russian schools and Canadian schools, depending on what kind of a future you really uh, foresee for your children. I don't want to go into school programs because this is like a very special subject. What I want to tell you today is about driving habits of Turkish people. And that is very interesting to me. What's interesting about it? You go to any business in Turkey and they will ask you to sit and drink tea with them and usually it takes forever. Sometimes it's relaxing and pleasant and sometimes it's becoming really overpowering because you go to one place then to another place and you keep on drinking tea and wasting time because sometimes you just want to chop, chop, chop and have things done. It's not very easy. But when it comes to driving, Turkish people are very impatient. They seem to be driving like a Formula One drivers, pilots. I mean, they are zooming in, zooming out, trying to get around. They're very impatient when people backing off from their uh, parking place. It is very, very annoying. I'll be honest with you. I'm not used to this kind of... It's like a very quick uh, change of pace. And I don't understand why the drivers are so impatient. Because once they get to their place of work, they seem to be very patient and drinking tea. Uh, it, it, it's a mystery to me. If you have the answer, please write it because I don't know. There are two other things which I want to share with you because when I was driving to Alanya and back, I observed a few things. In general, I prefer not to drive. I really have no need for that. Once in a while, I rent a car and renting a car is not very difficult. There are large agencies, small agencies, and sometimes there are some private people which uh, you can just ask to borrow a car and maybe give them some money. So there are several different options. But when you drive a car in Turkey, uh, expect that drivers of mopeds and bikes, they will be zooming all around. They pop up from nowhere and they drive against the traffic on the side of the street. It's really not what I'm used to, but that's just how it is. So we have to accept it. The other thing is, when you drive on the highway and there is D400, I call it highway, even though it's really not a highway, but kind of highway because uh, that's like a main route and it also has some exits, some turns, it has some lights on the way. It's uh, sort of like a mixture. It's a highway, autobahn, Turkish style. The drivers seem to wait until the last minute to change the lane to take exit. It's a mystery to me. And if it was just the one and they would be courteous to zoom in and uh, let the other car pass and zoom after that car, no. They have the whole line of people on the left trying to zoom into the right lane right before the exit because they didn't really care about changing the lane before. 
that is a mystery to me. I don't understand why. Again, if you have an answer, I would love to learn that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, seems like in Turkey, nobody ever turns the signal for changing lane or making a turn. So expect that the car will zoom in front of you or will, will go to the right turn from the left lane. It happens all the time. It's a very, very um, different style of driving. And uh, they often use their uh, signal. So if you're doing something wrong, they will let you know with the really quick sound. So a friend of mine was actually telling that uh, the best car with the best equipment in Turkey would be the one which, which, which has no turns left or right and has a very strong, strong sound signal. So if you are going to Turkey, if you are renting a car, expect those things. Speaking of Alanya, I just want to share a few other things and I'm going to accompany it with a few videos which I took in Alanya just to share with you. Alanya is a fine city to visit and I actually enjoyed it very much. In fact, downtown Alanya I probably like a lot better than I like downtown Antalya. Even Kalichi, it's not, in my opinion, is it, well, first of all, it's not that great and it's really uh, full of tourists. And in Alanya it's a little bit more relaxing, but on a hot day walking around there is still not very fun. You can also take Teleferik in Alanya and it will take you to a fort and you can walk around there. There is a bazaar. But honestly, the Teleferik in Sarisu is longer and in my view, it's even better. The view from uh, Teleferik in Alanya is pretty darn nice. It's very nice. It actually goes on the um, side of Aladdin and on the side of Cleopatra. Those are two different beaches. Uh, the other thing is, uh, if you travel to South America and you see some favelas, you know what favelas are, uh, well, you don't see this in Alanya. You actually have beautiful houses on the uh, sides of the mountains and the whole picture is very nice. If you are a foreigner and if you are thinking about retiring in Alanya, it probably is not a bad place to retire except for one thing. It's not very cheap anymore. In fact, it's more expensive probably in some cases than Antalya. And uh, the reason for that is because a lot of construction, a lot of advertisement dollars. So a lot of people are involved in that. And as I said, there are some real estate agents which take clients over there, but they by themselves still live in Antalya. Some of them live in Kony Alti. So Alanya is not a bargain place. When people ask me about Alanya, uh, they still think of Alanya as it was last year, a couple of years ago. You could buy pretty cheap real estate there, but now it's not the case. It's actually up in price. And even the cities in between, such as Manavgat and uh, there are a few other cities, uh, prices are climbing up everywhere there. Uh, one of the things when I was talking to a friend of mine who is Turkish and uh, who lived in the West and then now he moved to Turkey, in particular to Antalya, and he's working here as an interpreter. He told me that many Turkish people now actually stop trusting the banks and they take their savings and they put them into real estate. That's one of the reasons why real estate is coming out in price. It's not just foreigners which influence that. It is the whole economic situation where Lira is not very stable. It goes up and down and people expect that uh, it probably will go down and they don't know what kind of laws government will pass. Government in Turkey is very responsive and they actually ch make changes very quickly to the policies. And uh, people are afraid that there may be some changes to the government policies around money, around foreign currency. So they actually take money and uh, put it into real estate. This is not proven fact. It's just the anecdotal uh, evidence from a friend of mine. If you're looking for a bargain in real estate, if you're thinking about moving to Antalya and uh, Antalya as a province, not as a city, you may want to take a look to the west of Antalya, okay, instead of going east where Alanya uh, is. Going west from Antalya, you will find quite a few small cities, cities perhaps 
which were not influenced as much by this rise in real estate. It's also popping up in price, but people are still quite not there. If children is not your concern, or if uh, you find some other ways to educate your children, such as online, then moving to the remote area may be very conducive to your family, may be very conducive to what you want to live, how you want to live. In those places, it's less expensive in terms of uh, produce, in terms of real estate, and it's very relaxing, it's very chill. So those are my thoughts for you today. I'm Vas, welcome to my channel again. Leave some likes and comments and some questions. Subscribe to Telegram channel, uh, get involved with them, and maybe you will get some answers from those people. I'm Vas, good luck.